All right. So, um, I'm about to play Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness. Now, I actually kickstarted this game. It was one of those risky kickstarters, which meant that I only threw, like, $20 at the game. Uh, however much was necessary for me to get the, um digital copy of the game. I wasn't going to go for anything extra because uh, I, I've gambled on uh, indie TTRPG video games in the past and have had them all die. And my one saving grace is that I've never paid more than like 20 or $25 on them. And, you know, I, I've thrown 20 $25 away on a night out at the clubs with my middle-aged ass trying to buy uh, uh, AMFs and and then dying as a result and coming back to life. And it, it, it's a whole process. It happens. Um, <clears throat> that being said, I try to um, approach Kickstarters that do not have pedigree uh, with the same philosophy. And as such, uh, I wound up backing Black Geyser. I wasn't expecting much. I wasn't expecting it to actually be a thing. I was expecting it to die, much like a uh, two, maybe three other uh, isometric TTRPG Kickstarters before it. Uh, though I think it's actually two. Um, I've actually been very good at finding ones that work, that actually succeed. And cat, you will go away. All right. Um, and then she comes back because, of course, she's gonna come back. Anyway, <clears throat> so I tried playing a little of it when it was in early access, and I stopped before I could even get through the um, tutorial section. Uh, I don't even know if it was a tutorial section. It was early access, and I was, like, playing It, I was playing Baldur's Gate 3, and I was playing Solasta, and then I realized, holy crap, I hate having my save file rendered null and void. I'm just going to stop. And that's why I'm not going to play uh, Baldur's Gate 3 until it reaches its 1.0 release, because screw that. I'm, I'm done. I, I have... I have over a thousand video games on my Steam alone. Never mind when you add my GOG and so on and so forth. So, Nala, no, go away. Um, so yes, so I'm here and I'm doing my thing. I love you, Nala. I'm not just saying that. I would like you to not jump up on my counter. I would like you to not try and ruin what I have going on with my keyboard and everything. Yes, I am talking to my cat during this um, immensely important video. Um, so, let's, let's try this. Oh, best followers, crimes, and viewers on mountviewers.com. Clearly, I should go to mountviewers.com. No, not gonna do that. Sorry. Ma ma matra, matraka2308. How do I, how do I get rid of you? How do I get you out of here? You are a waste of, of space. You should not be here. Um, uh, can I ban? Oh, 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 no. Uh, I, I don't know how to do this shit. All right. Um, add friend, whisper, uh, no. Uh, manage suspicious user. Restrict. Yes, we will restrict. Sure. Uh, will be restricted as a suspicious user. Excellent. All right. So they are restricted. Um. Anywho. 
I, I'd rather have not have had to do that, but this is what I get when I'm recording my videos while also streaming my videos, I suppose. Uh, anyway, let's do this shit, shall we? New game! Alright. Obviously, I'm going to create my own character. I'm not going to just... Oh. Okay. Interesting art. It looks very much reminiscent of old school D and D art. Like I could see this in my old Undermountain adventure modules. So let's see what we get, shall we? So this is all about greed. My blade is sure, my arrow true. Were once elven tribes who lived close to the north. The demigod Dargalmir grew jealous over the love the elves showed for Tlindia and imprisoned a number of elven tribes in the snowy, cold north. He would forge his own race and command them as he saw fit. But the elves were first a creation of the God King and the Green Goddess, and as they changed to survive in the north, they also realized the strength they would need to be free. Dargalmir eventually realized his mistake and allowed his creations to rule themselves and commanded them to form six tribes. That doesn't sound like ruling themselves. Uh, drawing from the strength granted by their cold imprisonment and their god and goddesses, they rebelled against their demigod. Feldegug are similar to elves, but much pale. They are resistant to hard environments who most would consider unlivable. They are rarely seen outside of the snowy northern homelands, and most other races are very distrustful of them. Cunning serves where violence will not. Okay. Rillo. Travelers, traders, and alchemists from the race of a powerful jinn called Elenuato. Their homeland is shrouded in mystery. So few outside the Rillo uh, themselves know much about them. What is known is that they are the seekers of pleasure and experience, consummate traders and nomadic caravaneers. Rillo are a large, physically imposing race who bear a passing resemblance to elephants. I mean, if you consider the tusks, sure, but that that's about it. Like, that's as close to passing. Otherwise, they're just humanoids with tusks. Fine. They eschew religion and favor displays of wealth, and have a natural talent for brewing and drying. Interesting choice for an elephantine people, or at least an allegedly elephantine people, uh, largely because, frankly, uh, one, they don't look like elephants. Not at all. There's no trunk. There's no clumpy hooves. They've got thick hands. They're just big boys and girls, I'm sure. Uh, and then they're also all about pleasure and experience and mercantile endeavors. Um, like, elephants are known as one of the few animals that we are scientifically capable of, of, of knowing for a fact. 
mourn their family, their their fallen. Um, like to be, you know, mercantilists. This doesn't strike me as an elephantine thing to be. Um, very odd choice, all things considered. Uh, that said, I was break in a rock or break in skulls. Same to me. And of course, they're Scottish because they're always Scottish. An opportunity to do something different. All right, let's let. So, dwarves technically live on the ground, right? Um, I'm I'm gonna switch things over to the cam. One moment. Here we go. All right. Uh, computer, turn on the lamp. Let me try that again. Computer, turn on the lamp. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, uh, so dwarves are typically um, a race that lives underground, but for some reason they're always depicted as Scottish. I do not know why. Uh, they always drink ale. Where do they get the grain for this ale? Oh, it's mushroom ale, or it's ale from things that grow underground. Do you know it grows underground? Potatoes. Therefore, I posit that dwarves should not be Scottish. They should be Slovakian. They should maybe talk in a bit of an accent where they are trying to not move their mouths all that much because it is a little cold underground. And of course, it uh, you know, they do not want to uh, echo too much. They don't want to, um, oh, you know, uh, cause an uh, earth shake and maybe bring the tunnels down upon them. So they, they, take it, they speak in a more subdued manner. Um, a manner that is uh, either, um, well, it doesn't involve too much movement. It's either in the uh, front of the mouth, or maybe it's in the back of the mouth. Uh, either way, it's not a very lively accent like a Scottish accent is. And do you know what dwarves drink? They don't drink ale. Why the fuck would dwarves drink ale? How are they getting hops? How are they getting grains? No, you know what dwarves drink? They drink vodka. Vodka. It grows in the ground. Potatoes. They grow underground. You do not need the sun to grow potatoes. Who the fuck came up with dwarves drinking ale? It's vodka. And so that's all it is. Anyway, that's just my little take. Uh, and my terrible accent. <clears throat> so I'm gonna run with the dwarves. Do I want to be a fighter? A cleric? Highlander? Because, you know, dwarves are Scottish, apparently. Fuck that. Swindler, thief. The I'm light guides me in all things. Alright, that wasn't quite what I was meaning for, but okay. Um, I'm going with Cleric because one of my favorite characters I've ever played in Dungeons and Dragons was the Dwarven Cleric. He went by different names, but he was basically the same character. He, he might as well have been called Dwarf McDwarf Face for as unique as he was. But he was a cleric rather than just a fighter, so there's that. So Supernatural is actually good, so I will take uh, Supernatural and we will go with uh, 
Supernatural. Oh, screw it. seems good skills uh, bargaining and persuasion I've got points to destroy brewing and drying learning and research each point in intelligence increases the skill by blah okay uh, sure we'll do that theology we're, we're gonna do theology. Uh, oh, no, no. We'll do tend wounds. He doesn't care so much about theology. He just wants to tend wounds. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll go with uh, war clubs and hammers, small blades, rods and stabs, and um, slings and two stones. War clubs and hammers. We're gonna go with very stereotypical dwarven shit. There's our spells. We have spells. All right. Uh, let's see here. Appearance. Let's go with um, major black. Skin color. Sure. Hair color. No, we're going to go with that. No. I said we're going with hazelnut. Maroon. We'll go with the maroon. Hairstyle. Oh god, I'm gonna hate this, aren't I? I'm gonna go with perennial minor color. Set minor color. Color. They have no purple. Why do they not have purple? I'll go with bush. Alright. Uh what is what is good? Good picture. For maroon hair. Go. Oh my god, that is horrible. That is ugly. That's also ugly. Why does dwarf have pointy ears? Oh my god, these pictures are ugly. Oh. Oh god. Fine, I'll do this one. Dear Lord, they couldn't get good pictures? They had to get all these ugly ones. Or were they based on... Oh. Now I'm kind of feeling like asshole. I think these pictures are based off of photos from actual people. So I'm calling actual people ugly as opposed to, like, random faces ugly. I apologize for nothing. Look at that. He looks like he's sneering. Either smile or get off the pot. Shit or get off the pot. Smile or get off the pot. That's what this is. And no, no, he's not smiling. He's grimacing like he's, you know, maybe had a little too much coffee. Oh, God, what am I doing with this accent? It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, fine. I will be this one. He looks like he's trying really hard to pinch one off. But he's actually just praying. I don't want to name him after my typical names. We'll go with uh, Ivan. Ivan. Um, Stone boots. Just go with Ivan. Ivan is good. Hmm. 
Yes. I'm not going to like this, am I? What? Where's the will? Yeah? It's nice to be needed. Why not? I await your instruction. I'm listening. Oh, God. Speak your mind. Don't you have another lick, Spittle? Where's the fight? I don't see why not. My skills are at your disposal. Alright. <clears throat> we'll go with that one. Twenty minutes in and I just got done with the character. Quality content, isn't it? Uh, would you like to enable main quest guidance? You can change this later. Yes, let's do that. Oh, pretty art. I do like the art here. I like this loading screen art. And I do apologize. I am not terribly concerned about the sound of my chair scooting around. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is where I go to just do the things I like. Um, I would love to have it be professional eventually, but really, I'm just here to have fun. Uh, also, to get pissed. Oh, why didn't I look here first? And more to the point, why must I come fetch you for every little thing? Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what was I supposed oh, to be doing? Do you know this is the day the Lords of Isselbright are visiting? You are simply the laziest. Never mind. I am dwarf, I am not lazy. I am just taking break. It is just an eight hour break. You know, you take it by the fountain, you lay down. You drink a bit, you have a bit of vodka, and then you just do not wake up. Um, and maybe you forget a few of the painful things that happened the previous day. I do not have a problem. I do not need to go to an institution. The lords are already here and waiting to be served. And for goodness sake, don't forget to gather your things from your chest before you come to table. Why did I put them in the chest if I need to get them? I should have put them on the bed. Why on the chest? Oh, you know what? Never mind. Fine. I'll go to the chest. Who the hell puts their shit in a chest? I'm gonna go talk to these motherfuckers. Yeah? Shouldn't you be serving drinks to the lords over? You know? Who asked you? Greetings. Me. That's who. Good day to you, I. Well, good day to you, too. I stand with the king. Watch your step, boy. You know you what? I will headbutt you in the crotch. You have received the quest to inspect objectives uh, or your progress during your quest. Click the operations button on the user interface or press O. Okay. Uh, the whole day was a rush. You know what? That was very random. Um, the whole day was a rush. Since the lords and ladies arrived, I should get inside before I get into trouble. Why are you casting spells? Uh, I need to report to Berlin in the meeting room. I might also want to collect my things from my chest before I ever... Who the hell just leaves all their shit in their chest? Let me show you how to do it. What a waste of time. On over here? Please show us more. Where'd she go? <gasps> she disappeared! Alright, well let's go to work. She's obviously dead now. Let's let's just probably fuse herself like her left leg and right arm are now fused in the Statue of Liberty or something along those lines. <gasps> Not inebriated, you're inebriated. Um, all right. Uh, who do we have? Ice wizards! Hello, ice wizards. I like ice wizards. I usually prefer them to fire wizards because fire wizards are so typical. 
so boring. Everybody chooses fire wizards. More people need to choose ice wizards. All right, so let's see where this takes me. Espen Mansion. Outlaws can plant powders on unsuspecting targets to inflict negative effects. The powder must be on their person for one turn to activate. Okay. That doesn't terrify me at all. Make haste, Ivan. I totally missed what he just said. You can't be serious. Yes. Hello. Should I have brought a flask with me? I thought that's what the servants were for. Oh, dear God. Um, sure. No shit, where am I supposed to go? Belin. Belin, where are you? What a waste of time. It's almost like a game called Couriers of Darkness, where they're focused on the uh, evils of greed. Uh, maybe you shouldn't, you know, just take everything. But you know what? I don't think they're that subtle. I think they're just gonna let me take everything I want until it becomes completely uh, unpopular. Hello. Espen's sword. I should probably not touch if it. If I must. Probably right. Not gonna lie. You have a point. Take that. Take that. Take that. Apparently, I can't go up the stairs. So, take that. No. What about over here? Do we have somebody over here? No? Well, alright. Where the hell is my person? Where is the person I am supposed to go to? Alright, well, let's take a look at the map. Uh, my room. Alright, library. Okay, master suite. Alright, pod. Meeting room, kitchen. Uh, all right, none of those actually to equip an item on your character.
where do I go? Go to the meeting room and bell find Belly. Maybe it's over uh, here. Very well. I thought she was in another room. At last. Ugh, don't go twisting an ankle in all your hurry. You take care of the drinks. Lord Wolcraft and Lady Larenthal prefer wine. Lord Joran would like ale. Lady Virulin and Lord Espen want mead. Go! All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Joran likes ale. Virulin and Espen like mead. Okay. Joran Ale. Varelin Espen Mead. Where do I go? I don't know. I will just, I will just take all, all the things. I will... Alright. That's, that's fine. Scroll up a bit. Let's let's go to a uh, dialogue. Here we go. Wolcraft and Larenthal prefer wine. Wolcraft. Hello there. Oh, the staff. Your I will stop wine. Her. Wolcraft. Wolcraft. And Lady Larenthal. Hmm? You get wine. Yes, yes, get on with it. Well, I you suppose you expect me to toss you a coin for doing your job. You are very presumptuous. I'm just giving you a fucking drink, lady. God. Fucking entitled pricks. Oh, I bet, I bet she made her wealth through gumption and ambition and not some inheritance from her parents' diamond mine in Africa. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jorin wants ale. Jorin? Hello? Well? Yes. Your oh. ale, sir. You know this is supposed to be served at room temperature. No, of course you don't. All right. <clears throat> things go to shit, I'm not rescuing you. Uh, Virelin and Espen want mead. Hello. Who the fuck drinks? You're here. Germans. That's Finally. Fine. Okay, never mind. Ah, good. You can live. You, Lord Espen, for doing the bare minimum, can live. Last one, right? Hello. Ugh, the carriage was quite stuffy, and just what I wanted for a change. You too, Varelin. You and Espen may live. The rest of them, they can die, they can be hung up on a, a cross by their scrotums, for all I care. But you two may live. Shall we do business, gentlemen? Gentle ladies? Yes, let's. We are convened to discuss the situation with their own rule. What has been rumored and suspected for so long has finally come to pass. A council oh. of nobles with mining interests in the town have declared themselves independent from the crown of Isilmeral. Okay. And I do apologize, I need to step away from the stream for a bit, because I am streaming under a lie. I am supposed to... Uh, have 
accurate streaming on the phone, but I do not. I have it listed as the in extinction curse, and instead I am playing Black Geyser. There we go. Sorry about the delay. And yes, those of you watching on YouTube, this is unedited. Uh, because I am lazy. And of course, my gaming channel is meant as more of a casual thing for me to partake in. So, do with that what you will. Maybe eventually I will advance things. If I ever get a team that can do editing for me, I might actually do that. But that is highly unlikely at this point in time. So we'll have to see. Okay. I don't like this dirty business. Sending a list of grievances to the king. Sounds more like the actions of a bunch of uppity peasant farmers than nobility. There are ways these things are done. Oh, I can't wait for you to die. And there are ways that kingdoms may crumble. I understand your feelings on the matter, Lady Larenthal. But Darren Gould enjoys the sympathies of many important persons here in the North, and I number myself among them. What's more, there have already been defections among the Azimeral nobility, most recently Aldenar. She speaks of your son, Lord Espen, who chose to forsake his birthright to join the rebels. <sighs> and that's clearly the son's fault, not anything to do with the decay of modern society, I'm sure. Ah, yes. Thank you, Lady Larenthal, for reminding me. And I'll thank you, Lady Virilin, not to speak his name on this estate, nor in my hearing again. All right, Espen can die. Virelin is the only one worthwhile. Clearly. Um, I will happily kill every other person in this room. Except for myself, of course. Uh, but yes. Oh, why, I will... <laughs> but you won't. Whatever the loyalties of, uh, the young Lord of House Espen, the Southern Nobles have many legitimate complaints. Heavy. Some say ruinous taxation, delayed shipments thanks to the Crown's regime of inspections and checkpoints, the King's insistence that Daron Gould's military, e even the Town Watch, must be trained in the North. It's quite a list. Yes, it's all very sad. I'm sure they toss and turn the night away on their beds of gold bars. Taxation and bureaucracy are simply the facts of managing a prosperous nation, of keeping our enemies at arm's length. How long would their precious minds keep producing without the king's protection? Uh. All right. I mean, I, I still hold to what I said. I can't wait to see this This. Did this you know, die. I heard this rebellion was prompted in part by a belief making the rounds in Deron Gould that the king himself is cursed. <laughs> oh my, what exceptional nonsense. <laughs> Have they been breathing the fumes of their own minds? All right, very amusing. But like Lady Varellen, I am not unsympathetic to our southern friends. Surely some of Isilbright's rules and dictums could be culled, especially if it means avoiding war, a much more costly proposition than losing a handful of coin in taxes. Wise counsel, my friend, but I fear the time for compromise is already past. 
The message from Daron Gould was deliberately provocative, leaving the king no way to negotiate or save face. The time has come, lords and ladies, for us to commit our forces and our purses to our rightful liege and crush Daron Gould. Deliberately! Oh god. All right. <clears throat> so community theater aside. Um interesting beginning. God, I wish I had more wine. Though it's probably best that I do not. There we go. Let's do this, shall we? Or throw in with the rebels. They have the gold, they have a well-trained army, and most importantly, they control the mines. In a conflict of any significant length, having control of the source of the kingdom's metals means they must only outlast the north rather than outright defeat her. Hmm. All right. You there. What is your opinion on recent developments? The fuck are you asking me? I just pour the drinks. You're asking the errand boy? What does... I actually agree with this woman for once. Uh, I, I still want her dead. Uh, but why are you asking the errand boy? Kindly do not interrupt me while sitting at my table, Lady Larenfall. Well, speak up. Uh, all of you should die, but I'm not going to say that. So instead, I will say uh, a peaceful solution must always be sent, especially if the only point of the contention is money. Uh, whether or not Devon Gould has legitimate grievances, grievances is beside the point. They must be crushed. To do otherwise would invite rebellion from every quarter. Since I have little experience in political matters, it is, for me, the wisest course is silence. I'm kind of leaning that direction, but come on. Come on, that's a cop-out. Obviously. I have to choose either one or two. And I don't like two, so I guess I'm choosing one. Very noble of you. I agree that the value of gold must be held cheap against the value of doing the honorable thing. Ooh. Okay. Um. Voice acting is interesting so far. Um, I won't say anything further on the matter. Oh! My ladies, my lords, we are under attack. Please, take shelter at once. Perhaps the cellar. You may wish to arm yourselves, my lords. Both are very good answers. Um, questions. Who are Who is attacking? And how much time do we have? I'm going to go with who. I think how much time do we have is the more... Pragmatic uh, option, but I think whom is the more story appropriate. They make no secret of their allegiance. They fly the banners of Daron Gould. That one was far at the back. All I could see of him was his vibrant red hair like a flame. Gingers. 
Clearly, the evil this world needs to cleanse. I kid. I like gingers. Some of my best friends are gingers. Hell, I've had people think I was a ginger? I think it's because I'm one of those people who have brown hair, but my facial hair is a little reddish. It's not red, it's red it uh, anyway, detailed details. Moving on. I'll deny. Too little, I'm afraid. Their numbers are overwhelming. We were forced to fall back to the main gate, and they're already... <gasps> Surely they will listen to reason. They won't kill us out of hand like so many soldiers. They wouldn't dare. Right? You came here with your honor guard, right? Like elite of the elite to protect you? You did that, didn't you? No? Calmly, oh. my friends. Let's all go out to Happy meet Death them. Day. They're not bandits after all. Wolcroft? Are you senile? Yes, go ahead. You have my blessing to speak on my behalf if it's of any use. What? Huh? Who? Oh, what? No. Huh? You? What? Where are you going? Come with me. Make haste. Uh. What a waste I, of time. I. I. You and you lot with. That, my lord. The main sound. gate has already been breached. The house of Espen is about to fall to the agents of Daron Gould. Now, never mind that. Just follow. Oh, dear God. And you, pray for our deliverance. Or, if you can, our enemies downfall. I myself am praying your religious schooling amounted to something. Sure. Me to you come with can't you. can't be serious. Now listen to me. Listen closely. This is important. The Lady Espen was the love of my life. My one love. There was nothing arranged about our betrothal. That's great. Um, What's this got to do with me? so lucky as to meet her herself. But if you had, she... God's damn these Derongold swine. Behind me is my dressing chamber. 
Go fetch my swords from there. you at last, father. Didn't figure you would try and hide from your fate. To be betrayed by my own son. Who wouldn't hide from such a terrible end? I've learned a few things, you see. Things your priests and man-at-arms could never teach. I have gained a new perspective. Seen the truth of this world. So... You were not even paid in coin to turn traitor against your own house. Only pretty words. Kill me if you wish. But I promise it will avail you nothing. Every man pays for his sins, my son. And the price of a sin such as this... Well... Enough of your piety! It sickens me. But your last decision, at least is the correct one. Pardon Hold me? still, Father. Don't worry, my child. Your hardships are over for today. Um, audio direction clearly needs some work. It's a little all over the place. Uh, hmm. That said, um, that was a lot more of an entertaining opening than I expected it to be, all, all things considered. Um, I do admit, I do admit, I, I did kickstart this game. <laughs> I did not have the greatest hopes uh, of its quality. Get up, lazy boy. It's time to go to bed. And that might be an asshole-ish thing to say, but... Well, the concept seemed a little... It seemed interesting if executed weren't right. So we'll have to see if the actual concept, the whole greed, gives you power. Uh, but if you resist it, uh, you have your own sort of thing going on. Um, so far, voice acting... It doesn't feel like they got Bob from accounting to do a voice. It feels more like they got the local community theater to do voices. And I mean that as in, like, a town of 500. They have a community theater, and they got those the, the people involved in that community theater to do the voices. Um, like, there's a competency, but there's also... Amateur level that makes me think that they did not pull from the uh, highest pools of talent. Uh, not that I have anything to say about that. I'm, I'm very untalented in my voice work myself. So take that as you will. Um, it'll be interesting to see. What? Does this look like Rothgar's realm to you? You're in my hut. But no more questions for tonight. There's a cot over there. You should try to get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow will be a very, very long day.
if I like this game anymore. Clerics can't use battle staffs. Let's go. Let's go. Um. So. Well, this is technically supposed to be a first impression. I'm already an hour in. I think I'm going to make this a two-parter first impressions. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit for the evening. And I will pick up again tomorrow. And then I'll just blend the two videos together as is appropriate. Thank you if you have been watching. Uh, I see Ice Wizards and Lara Craft. Uh, thank you. Seriously, thank you for watching. Whether you are actually watching or you just have this on while you're doing crunches. I think for me. Uh, I'm gonna choose the very imaginative title of this safe game as new game. Now a lot of people might think that is overly simplistic. I think it is the height of art. So, see? New game, chapter one, day zero. It emphasizes the beginning of all things, and frankly, I think is the most six. <laughs> I've had way too much wine tonight. Uh, have a good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope you had fun with this. And tomorrow night. We'll see. I've got a D&D &D game tomorrow, so who knows what I'll be able to bring myself to do after the game is over at about 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Alright. Well, good night to everyone, and of course, pleasant dreams.